Like he's the cool Pharisee. I'm the nervous Nelly. And Nicodemus is like the grand Poobah. And then Yusuf yeah. is like the sweetie poo. This is like the greatest description <laughs> of the Pharisees I have ever heard. Well, we have reached our final days of filming in Utah and got the opportunity to talk to Shmuel and Yanni for the very first time. And we got to see a mysterious scene filmed with all of the disciples and some of the challenges that came with that right here in the last days of Utah. So here we are about to film this carriage scene. The filming of it is a bit more unique than I thought it was gonna be. So is that gonna stay on that truck bed? Yeah, as it moves, it'll look like it's being pulled by horses. And here we're watching uh, our beautiful crew setting up this trailer, this, this here is called process trailer and allows for people to be around this trailer while filming without the camera being super shaky. This also allows for lights and other people and other crew to be around when filming a scene. You see this a lot in a lot of like movies and TV shows, they'll do it with cars a lot. Like if you have a scene where people are driving a car uh, in a movie or TV show, usually they're on a trailer like this. That way the actors don't have to actually be thinking of their lines and trying to you know, follow the road rules. Keeps it safe. We're gonna be loaded in that white van up there. The rest of the crew and the actors are gonna be right here in that carriage here, obviously acting, driving up and around this whole circular path around here just to get this shot that looks like they're in a carriage being pulled by horses. To watch how they film this simple carriage scene and give the illusion that the carriage is being pulled by horses while everybody gets to focus on the scene and their lines. It was just a really cool thing to be a part of. And of course, since I was already hanging out with Shmuel and Yanni, I got to talk to them. You guys are my first Pharisees that I've ever, ever had the chance to talk to. Please don't condemn me. Oftentimes they're kind of looked at when you read the New Testament and the Gospels with Jesus, they're looked at as the villains and very legalistic. So how do you guys get into that mindset of playing a Pharisee? Do you know who you are talking to? Did you hear his disrespect? A lot of us can relate to the idea that we're born to believe things and raised to believe things and then sometimes we are, are stuck in that and it's hard for us to see other points of view. And so if I put myself in the mindset of if, if this Pharisee was raised to believe that the Torah is it and yes. something anything happens that deviates from what I believe and have been raised my whole life to think of as immutable God's law, then anything that doesn't fit has to be false prophecy. And the law is God. These are persecuted people for generations and they are trying to make sure that the Messiah does come back. And how do we do that? Isn't the Messiah supposed to come at a time when all is holy? If we don't abide by it, we're gonna to continue to be these persecuted people. Basically, Yanni and Shmuel are trying to save their people. So season two gives us this major cliffhanger, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus comes through the curtains. How do we see the impact on the Pharisees this season? From Shmuel's perspective, infecting another huge segment of our community with these false teachings and elevating himself to be the Messiah, it's only going to embolden Shmuel to try to find witnesses that will join his efforts. Are you looking for a man who performs healings on Sabbath? Yes. You know, Jesus and I have another encounter in this season, and it's a pretty impactful one for my character, and it was, we've already shot it, it was very kind of an emotional experience. That should hopefully get people even more invested into the conflict. Our Shmuel? That's even better. The best thing that I can hear from fans of the show is when they say, I'm going to be less judgmental towards others because I can see that I've been a Shmuel in my life where I've been so focused on what I thought was right that I didn't listen to or have open eyes for another perspective. The next day, on our way to filming a scene with the disciples, the powdery dirt in Utah created a little bit of an issue. Got some good old fashioned Utah snow right here. This happened before, season two, but that was mud. Three, two, one, go! to find out how we how we get out of this mess. He's got a cowboy hat on, so I feel confident that it's gonna work out. <laughs> I'm actually a little scared right now. That would not have been the way that I thought this was gonna go down. So today we're filming this scene all day long. All the disciples here together in camp. And if you look right there, we got some weapons and they're sitting around in a circle and they're having an intriguing conversation, sharpening their weapons. What on this earth is going on? Filming a scene with all the disciples by itself is gonna take forever because you gotta film all of the angles of that conversation. But then other times, there's these other external factors that just slow things down. And it feels like every time they call action, there's a plane that flies by overhead. I won't get too much into this because we already did a video on it. Okay, 
keep rolling, we'll try it again. Stopping everything, the plane going overhead, and then everybody having to pick right back up where they left off. It's impressive on their part. I don't know how they do it. I was just down there by Andrew. I mean, he's got a bow and arrow. I'm starting to wonder if this is a little bit like the Ninja Turtles, where each of them has like their weapon of choice. <laughs> This is a serious question. Yeah. If Andrew was a Ninja Turtle, uh -huh. which one would he be? Which weapon would he have? I'm Raphael. You're challenging authority. Mm -hmm. You got the size. One, You're ready one, to go. One hundo. Yeah, but as Andrew, you got stuck with a bow and arrow. Well, side. as Andrew, I'm Legolas. As Noah, I'm Raphael. <laughs> so how often do you have big scenes like this where all of the disciples are here together? Okay. Like once a week, we'll have one of those scenes where it's like all of us sort of, and then it, it focuses on a few people in the scene, but we're all sort of there. Although it's it's not as fun for the people who have the early call time, which was not me. I had the good call time. But some people, whenever it's like all of us, you look and you're like, oh, I got the 5 a.m. shift. Oh, and then man. like you get ready and then you have to kind of wait around because it takes a while to get everyone ready. Okay, they're about so, to start. So real quick, what are you guys yeah. doing in this scene? Just super fast. We're sharpening weapons. We're getting ready for um, the war, the inevitable war that takes place in the next scene where you see us all sort of charging down a hill. Um, we all have our, our very specific battle cries. Not unlike the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. We'll all have our little catchphrases. So right now they're all sharpening weapons, all the disciples, because the crowd's getting hectic. They're starting to surround Jesus more. And so right now they're sharpening weapons, but they're debating, do we need them? Should we not use them? Should we use them? Didn't see that coming. You're gonna see Simon teaching Matthew how to use a knife. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty intense. Things are getting intense season three. And the camera essentially like pans and it catches each one of us. So it's like, you know, John goes down, and then it's like Big James, then it's me, um, and I give a little wink to the camera. So that's what makes this scene so interesting. Not that thing that Noah said, but that thing that Sam said. Because anytime, like, the disciples have been sitting around a fire or sitting around something and having conversations, think season two, episode three. So you really wanted to hear all that? Yes. 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 <laughs> it's always incredibly fascinating and kind of just sitting out here, picking up on their dialogue. I'm really excited for this scene. But alas, all good things must come to an end and we reach the final day and the final shot. The martini I'm shot. I'm gonna be breathing heavy on your lines, both of you. The final shot of the day. And action. And even in that final shot, there were plenty of things that kept trying to delay us. Lots of holding because airplanes <laughs> flying overhead. And right now we're in the shade. This is the martini shot. Now we gotta wait because that cloud the sun is out. Let's, Let's do this. Rolling. 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 Cut. 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 That's a wrap. Hey. That's a wrap. What he said. That is a wrap on Utah. And next week we are returning to the wonderful heat of Texas. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell by the subscribe button. That way you're joining us without the heat exploring season three.